So we're going to look at translating these quadratic relations today. So last day we looked at the expansion and compression factors that are in the denominators with the x and y. So the expansion factor with the x is in the denominators a, the expansion factor for y is in the denominator as b. And now we're going to look at the shifts. So if we have an x minus h, that's a horizontal shift of plus h. Now what's changing from with regular functions, and this is not a function, it's a relation, what's changing from regular functions is now that the y translation is with the y variable, the minus k represents a shift of plus k. Okay, So we are now, whatever, what how we observed and um, interpreted the translations and expansion and compression for x's, we're going to do the same for y's now, since in the relationship, the y variables are the y transformations are with the y, just like with the x's in the fu in functions. So our center is going to be at h k, and the length of the x axis is going to be double the expansion factor, or two a, and the the y axis length is double the expansion factor b, and the centers of the the sort of the vertices, since the center is going to be at h k. If it is trans x, the y coordinate of the vertex is the same as the center, and the x coordinate of the vertices are just going to be starting at the center. We're going to go to the right, the, the horizontal radius essentially, and left the horizontal radius from the center. The same thing can be said for the along the y axis. The horizontal center is going to be the same, okay, and then the vertex moves. From k up b and down b. Okay, and then we get we end up with our trans x and trans y uh, hyperbola. So if we were to look at it like this, I'll just sketch it out. Okay, we have our center. Okay, their centers is going to let's say our center is randomly going to put it there. It's going to be h and k. Okay, if it's trans x, we're going to go a h plus a to get to the vertex here and then h minus a to get to the vertex here okay so we're starting at h we're going to the right and left and we're going to locate our vertex to be able to draw in our hyperbola like that okay now if it was trans y the trans y situation is, is similar. It's going to look like this. We're going to have our, you know, we can put our vertex here at h k, a, okay? and since that length is going to be b, we're going to go from k plus b, and then we're going to go k minus b. Okay, so that length is b as well, and that would locate our vertices for trans y, and then we can just draw our vertices through there like that, okay? And then the h coordinate would stay the same for that vertex coordinate because it's not been translated from there. Let me just clean this picture up a little bit, okay? That coordinate here is gonna be the center, which is h comma k. Okay, so we're going to go plus b, minus b from that center k value. Now with ellipse, it's exactly the same thing, except really there's not much difference between ellipse and uh, hyperbolas, other than once we locate the four, the vertex vertically, and then the, the expansion horizontally, okay, we draw outward whereas ellipse we're just going to draw inward right we draw that ellipse shape and the x-axis length is going to be 2a the y-axis length is to be similar to what's going on here okay so let's try a few of these hyperbolas so we want to first of all put this into the graphing form it makes it much easier to deal with so i'm going to divide both sides by 36 so I wound up with 9 over 36. This simplifies to 1 over 4. 
This becomes 4 over 36, which simplifies to 1 over 9. That's equal to 1. So right now we need to identify one more thing compared to last day. We need to identify the center. Okay, so I'm going to make sure we're clear on what the center is. Uh, we'll do this in green. Okay. So the center coordinate is going to be based on those shifts. So the center is going to be at x equals negative 3, y equals 1. So I'm going to start sketching my diagram over here. X is negative 3, Y is 1. Okay, so there's my center. I also want to know my A and B values so I can work out my slope. Okay, so A is equal to 2, coming from here, and B is equal to 3. So then my slope is going to be equal to 3 over 2. Okay, it's a rise over run. So I want to also use these points to locate my vertices. So I, these are not just a ratio. These are the actual A and B values. So my A value being 2, I'm going to move 2 to the right from the center. So 1, 2. Okay, so that coordinate is going to be at negative 1, positive 1 and it's going to move 2 to the left here. So this coordinate is going to be negative 5, positive 1. Okay, so those are my x-axis vertices. And then my y-axis vertices, I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. So that's going to be at negative 3, positive 4. Okay, and it's going to go down to about here. So it's going to be negative 3, negative 2. Is that, it's going to be that coordinate. So then these coordinates are what I use. Now if this was a ellipse, I can just draw my ellipse in. But now I'm going to draw my slopes. Okay, so I'm going to locate those corners. And those corners allow me to draw in my slopes like this. Okay, so the slope of this line is y equals 3 over 2. And we might as well put it, write the equation of that line, because we do know the center is at negative 3, positive 1. Okay, in fact, I'm going to write down the equation of this line, y equals negative 3 over 2, x plus 3, or x minus negative 3, plus 1. So negative 3, positive 1 being the center is a coordinate on this line, so we can write that in the point slope form. So this is a trans x graph. So the last thing I really need to do is just sketch my graph in. Since it's trans x, I'm going to use the x-axis here. Draw that in. Draw that in. Again, the vertex and the asymptotes allow me to sketch that graph.